Hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back to the channel. For this video, let's talk about video game review scores. And I'd say we can even take it one step further and talk about video games that you can love, you can appreciate, but when you go online, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I love this game, but it got a seven out of 10. Hypothetically, it's a C. So does that mean that I shouldn't play because another game got a better score? We're gonna have this conversation and throughout the entire process of the video, we are gonna showcase five games that have gotten scores below 75 on average. So when you look at that, if you compare it to like a, when you went to school, a 75, a 70 is like, oh, you could have done so much better, but this is such an objective conversation that I cannot wait to read your comments. So if you like what I do and you want to help support the channel, please consider subscribing, hit on that bell, go down to the comment section and let me know. When it comes to video game review scores, do you care about that? Is that something you factor in before you spend those uh, 60, 80, $100? Because those collector's editions, they are very much up there. So I think that in order for us to have a real genuine conversation about this topic, we gotta talk about gamers. We are incredibly passionate. We are very opinionated. Depending on, on when you started playing games, you can maybe be a lot pickier. Say you're somebody that started playing games on the days of the N64 and you love the platforming genre with games like Super Mario 64, you go to 2020, you can look at a game like, I don't know, New Super Lucky's Tale on the Nintendo Switch and where somebody could be going into that game for the very first time and going, wow, this is amazing. You could be looking at it going, well, it's another one of those. Does that mean that one person is right and one person is wrong? In my opinion, no, because it really depends on what you really want to get out of that game, depending on how much you're willing to spend, the length of the game. Maybe you as a gamer, you think that in order for a game to be good, needs to be a 9 out of 10, and it also needs to last anywhere between 60 to 80 hours. Whereas in my case, I prefer games within the eight to 10 hour part of things. I think this was really bad on the days of uh, GamePro magazine, etc., where people did not have access to online. And it makes sense. Look, you're about to spend $40 on this PS1 game and you don't wanna spend that only to have the game suck. You don't want that game to be horrible. So with a family like mine, with my mom and myself, we didn't have a lot of money, so I really did look at magazines like GamePro to check out some games, but on the flip side, I do remember getting a couple of video games like Legend of Legaia and many others on the PS1 that they weren't hated, but when you looked at the reviews, it's like, oh, that is a lot lower than I would have given it. I think a good example is a game like 50 Cent Blood in the Sand. That's actually the game that inspired me to work on this video because initially I saw 50 Cent, I'm like, this is a joke. There is no way this is gonna be a solid game. My friend from Canada, him and I joked that if I see the game for 20 bucks, I'm gonna buy it. So I went to Video Avenue in Puerto Rico, I saw for 20 and I went like, well, I guess I'm gonna buy it. And it had online co-op and I love playing the game. Now, is it a great game? Hell no. Is it an amazing technical masterpiece? No, the game is broken. It is buggy. Many times the levels, I would actually show up below them so I could skip entire levels. The boss battles are dull. When you look at the meta score, it is a 71. So it's just like just above a C. And obviously when you look at websites like Metacritic, it's a conglomerate of different review scores, right? So you can't just look at that and think that overall, everybody thought it was a C. But when you look at the score and you look at the price, you can be like, well, maybe I'll try and play a game that averages 80. But for me, I am so happy that I did not look at review scores. I just looked at it going into it thinking that I was gonna laugh, but I had a pretty great time. And now I wanna do something different because the last game that I'm gonna bring up in this video is another game with online co-op. And I've been playing that with a good friend that also has a YouTube channel and we've been just talking on Discord, engaging on, on this conversation of objectively bad games if you went by review scores that we like, that we appreciate. So I would like to introduce to all of you right now, Dark One. Dark, what's going on, man? Not much, how you doing, Juan? Glad to be here, bud. Doing pretty good, man. And I'm happy that we finally got a chance to talk about this on video, because I feel like on Discord, we've dedicated hours to this discussion while we've been playing the other games. So when it comes to review scores, how important are they for you? Honestly, for me, game scores really don't 
play much of a factor. It's more or less um, games that I'm interested in, opinions from people I actually care about, and that kind of stuff. Like, like that's really the biggest thing. Review scores are so subjective in nature, but they try to be guys in objectivity, so I really don't take them very seriously personally. And based on that, can you bring up your first example of a game that you really like, you appreciate it, but then you looked at the scores and maybe uh, it wasn't loved by other people? So yeah, actually one of the one of the games that I uh, I love to play is for the PS3, and it's called the uh, Armored Core for Answer. The whole point of that game is to build the ultimate mech or Armored Core. But this game got lambasted on reviews. I mean, there's 30s, there's 40s, there's 50s, there's 70s. Um, it's sitting at like 62 on uh, for the PS3 version on Metacritic. The people who review it don't actually understand how close the developers were going for what they were aiming for. Build the ultimate mech. You play a mercenary, so you're going to have to do missions. They're short missions. They're meant to be replayed over and over and over again. Are you making a mech for fast-paced combat, so you're going to do melee and light? Are you going to do a general purpose one that's trying to be good at everything? Or are you going to do a heavy hitter? And that's the whole point of the game. Then you get to fight these giant mechs and single mechs, and there's a bunch of other stuff in co-op and all this other stuff that you can do in-game that everybody just kind of glances over because it doesn't fit their little box, which is annoying. No, and I like that you mentioned that the game really met the expectations of the developers, and you gotta really applaud that, because I think that far too many video games try to check off this mainstream mark, right? Where they have this initial concept, but then it's gotta sell to the masses. There's gotta be a gamer out there that wanted to have this specific experience of building their mech. I never played that game, but I'm really thankful that you brought that one up. And for me, this next one, I swear I like this game despite the way that I'm going to present it, but this is a game that I rented multiple times on the PS2, and this is Stuntman uh, from the creators of the blockbuster series Driver. So this is a game where you play as a stuntman and you do stuntman things. So if you've watched movies like The Getaway, etc., you pretty much play the racing part, the driving parts of this. I love the fact that you get to see the little things and behind the scenes parts of movies, etc. In this game, you get to be the person that does the badass parts of the movie. So it's not just about driving and getting from point A to point B. It's about, hey, you gotta make sure you take down this car door. Make sure you take a sharp turn and you go over here. Now, where I think this game got a lot of hate and henceforth it got a 71 meta score, which is not horrible, right? But I think that it is so frustrating because it's so time sensitive and making sure that get this turn, but then you have five seconds to get to the next point, especially when you're still familiarizing yourself with the environments. You make mistake after mistake. You gotta hit pause, you gotta go back and restart, and then it's like a 10 second loading screen. And it does get very aggravating. This is a game that I cannot play for longer than 30 minutes because I wanna just damn near break the controller. It is so frustrating, but you feel like a badass. And ultimately, look, much like Armor Core, the developers wanted to make something where it was build the ultimate mech. The name of the game is Stuntman. You play a stuntman and you do stuntman things. I know many people are still gonna say, look, this is a bad game. I'm not gonna sit here and say it is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece, but it's pretty damn enjoyable. After talking about Stuntman, Dark One, uh, could you bring up your next example? Yeah, actually one of the games that I can think of is sitting at a 62 right along with Armored Core on Metacritic, and that is a game called Dex. For those that don't know what this game is, it is a 2.5D side-scrolling open world action RPG cyberpunk game the music the artwork the atmosphere that all that entails and brings together um, it brings it together like this dirty grungy kind of lived in world that you get in like a cyberpunk game factor in things like the, kind of the matrix storyline that kind of deal combat's a little clunky the twin stick shooter element from one of the mini games is a little clunky too but like that game got lambasted for those two particular things and everything else got ignored. So for me, I, I see those games and I'm just like, why are you guys ignoring all these other elements? You just focus on these specific ones. It really does bother me sometimes. No, and I'm happy that you brought that game up because when you first sent me a tweet about it, I was like, wait, what? I had never heard about it. And I think that it is because it got panned by reviewers, right? So maybe it just went down the scale and a lot of people didn't find out about it. And it's not up until maybe you get some kind of indie bundle for like 10 games for $5 or something like that. 
that people do check it out. So uh, thank you so much for bringing that one up. Now, that being said, I did mention there's a very specific purpose as to why Dark One is uh, right here with me, and that's because he and I have been playing a co-op game on PC that's also available on PS3, Xbox 360. It's a game that's loved by giraffes, and we gotta talk about Resident Evil 6. Look, I know, hey, hear me out. This game got a meta score of 67 on the Xbox 360. I played and beat Resident Evil 4 and 5, so even after the fact that, you know, you think about, hey, this game's in co-op, I really just wanted to get a chance to play it for myself. This is not a good Resident Evil game. Dare I say, it is a horrible, one of the worst Resident Evil games of all time. When you remove that and you look at everything else for what it is, it's a really fun co-op action game with laughable cutscenes, outrageous gameplay. It's got a couple of parts where you have to rely on your teammate in order to progress through the story, and I appreciate little things like that. Would I ever play this game by myself? No. There is no point where I would do that. I'm only playing this game with Dark One. We've played about eight hours of it so far, and look, it's the perfect game to look at it and be like, wow. Look at what they've done with this game in comparison to Resident Evil 7, the Resident Evil 2 remake, but when you remove the recognizable parts of the game and just take it for the mechanics and the story and the world, you gotta laugh. There's one part where it's like, you're going down as Leon Kennedy and he's just pointing at this huge beast and he's not even, he's not even struggling to aim. He's just like, well, I guess that's the thing. I got my shotgun. I'm gonna try to get the job done. And these are things that have led to a great experience. And the fact that the story, even though it's there, the characters themselves even poke fun at the fact that, oh, well, can this get any worse? And then two seconds later, boom, it actually does, means that it's the perfect game to play with a key friend that you can just catch up. We're playing like an average of an hour and a half per week, and I can't wait every time that we finish playing to get to the next session. So I hope that we can still be friends after I mention that I like to play Resident Evil 6. Once again, terrible bad, awful Resident Evil game. It, it flat out tells you where the items are. Hey, you gotta look for a key. It's literally right there. This is a game that it's not about thinking, it's about having fun. So thank you so much, uh, Dark, for hanging out with me. If they wanna check out some Linux gaming tech videos, where can they find you? Well, if they wanna find me, they can uh, look on the YouTubes, Dark One Linux Tech Gaming or Dark One Linux in your search, and it'll probably pop up. Um, or you can contact me on Twitter at Dark One LTG. Great for being here. I appreciate having these conversations with you, Juan. Always, always a great time, bud. So thanks again. Thanks once again, man. And thank you to everybody that leaves a comment. Uh, I love bringing up the comments on the videos because yeah, the channel is Player Juan. It is in the name, so it's about my opinions, my experiences playing video games, but I do love the back and forth conversation. So uh, let me know if there are any other videos you would love for me to talk about, whether it's a particular discussion about a topic like this, or it's a, a game that I should play and be because it's horrible, but apparently does have many definitive good things about it. And if you like what I do and you want to help support the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting on that bell. Once again, go down to the comment section and recommend. I love doing stuff like these videos. I do have a secondary YouTube channel where I only stream. So make sure you subscribe over there. It's a little inconsistent in terms of dates because I make sure that I work on these videos and whenever I do have time available, I work on that. And if you want to listen to me even more and talk about things like the digital versus physical video game debate, you can subscribe to the A Cast of the Past podcast at youtube.com slash A Cast of the Past. We put out a brand new episode each and every Sunday talking about games and movies. So up until next time, thank you for watching, supporting, and appreciating giraffes, and take care, everybody.